Okay, good day everybody. Today I would like to share some of the results of my master's thesis uh, with you entitled The Vibrational Communication in the, Ips, um, in the Bark Beetle Ips Typographus. So first we have to look at this. Everybody working with bark beetles in any context has probably uh, seen maps like this. This is a map of calamitary areas of the last years in Germany. But bark beetles are not only in Germany causing um, serious problems. So this um, little flag over there could be here or in the United States or nearly everywhere in the um, temperate northern hemisphere. So due to climate change, spruce and other conifers are severely threatened by bark beetles. So we should try to understand what makes them so successful. Proven is its extremely effective aggregation system based on the pheromone the males as well as the females produce. So this is a picture of the bark of the common spruce. And here are some bark beetles attracted by their pheromone. In case of Ips typographus, it's um, the males initiate boring. So the females need to find a male's um, borehole. And that could look something like this. Probably you can't see it at all. So she can leave it to chance to find one or she can actively search for it. Doing that, she can rely on a given census, which would be olfactory or visual. If we change the point of view to that of a beetle, it seems very hard to find a borehole. So on laying trees, the drill dust ejected by the males lies as a small pile around the borehole and serves as a distinctive orientation ad. But on standing trees, the drill dust often trickles down. So in the last years, a lot of work was done by our colleagues to answer to what extent bark beetle, uh, other bark beetle species use vibrations in the context of communication. It could be shown that stridulatory signals are emitted, emitted in the context of mating, search for mates, mate choice, and competition with conspecifics. Although Ips typographus was thought to be one of the silent bark beetles, Rudinsky pointed out that we have to overthink this assumption. So in this study, we had two main questions. Um, the first one, how does a female bark beetle find a male's borehole? And the second one, does Ips typographus use vibrations to orientate? To answer the first question, we designed an artificial borehole in a cylinder um, ending in a drawer. The cylinder could be vibrated and around the cylinder was an arena in which the beetles could move freely. The arena was mechanically decoupled from the cylinder. And we put 50 beetles uh, selected by chance in the arena and after some acclimatization time, we started a vibration of different frequencies and observed the beetles over 10 minutes. Any beetle who entered the artificial hole could be removed and restored in alcohol for later sex determination without disturbance of the others. This was repeated six times for each parameter tested and 12 times in the control group. So here we see the average numbers of beetles entering the hole. And interesting is that at a given frequency of 4,000 Hertz, significantly more beetles entered the artificial borehole than in the control group. And as you can see, um, in the pheromone and the dead old wood group, um, they get by far the most beetles in. So the olfactory system seems to be um, the most important orientation system. Interesting was that it seems like of this extra beetles entering the hole, all are females. The males behave pretty constant through the experiment. So it might be coincidence if a male beetle enters a borehole. But at a given frequency of 4,000 Hertz, significantly more females entered the artificial hole. So additionally, we filmed the experiment from above and we noted the point of time uh, a beetle entered the hole. And by that, we could calculate the percentage of beetles on the vibrating cylinder over the, the experiment. So one can see that there are significantly more beetles on the vibrating cylinder over the trial period. From this, we conclude that the females modulate their search behavior in some way when they perceive vibrations produced by the males. For Ips typographus, two types of sounds were described. Um, one is a clicking sound and one is a longer chirping sound. Uh, the clicking sounds are described as stress clicks. 
and it is not known yet how they are produced. So what we did is to let the beetles feed through an agar-agar gel between glass plates for better view. And we could observe that the males walking back route, backwards, uh, throwing out the boring dust with their abdomen, used their mandibles to generate a force supporting that movement. And they use um, the same movement to throw out a competing male, an unwanted female, or when grabbed uh, with forceps, they try to free themselves. At some point, the mandible loosens and snaps forward over the ground. And um, this creates a clicking sound that is indeed often heard in, in stress situations. Sounds like this. <laughs> the uh, chirping, which is described as stridulation, could not be observed by us. What we could observe is a scratching movement over the wood fibers, which sounds like this. So each of these packages is one scratching movement over the fibers and each single click seems to correspond to one single wood fiber. And as you can see, there is some energy in the higher frequencies as well. So we try to find out if the beetles orientate using vibrations as a cue. For that, we 3D printed a Y-shaped branch. Each side of the branch could be vibrated separately and we played examples of the general feeding sound, the clicking sounds, and this recorded sequence of the scratching sound. And as you can see, the feeding sound as well as the clicking sound are grappling on, on the beetles. So they could use these sounds as a cue to avoid colliding with their galleries. The scratching sound, on the other hand, has an attractive effect on the beetles. So it is possible that it contains the information the females use to modulate their behavior to increase the chance of finding a male's borehole. So thank you for your time and your interest. That's it from me. Thank you.